Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Black's Chapel. Good morning. good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad and we're going to bless his name today. Let us stand, please. We are in the presence of this awesome God of ours. And he has assembled us back into his house once again. And I'm going to give everybody a minute to stand to get to their responsive reading, which is found on the inside of your bulletin. And it is found in the Gospel of John, the sixth chapter, verses 53 through 56. And when everyone has found it, give a hearty praise the Lord, if you will. Praise the Lord. All right. And we find these words. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drink my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. Altogether, he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I am him. My, my, my. <laughs> And our hymn this morning is How Great Thou Art. Now we come in contact with a lot of awesome things and this, that, and splendor and this, and all of these type things. But there's only one somebody that we can look at and we can see how great he really is. And if you know him beyond a shadow of a doubt for yourself, you know how great he truthfully is.
Good morning, Black Chapel. This morning, uh, on the front of our, our program, we see John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know, when I, I, I read this particular verse, this lets us know again, the reason for this particular season that we're in. Right. The reason that we're celebrating is because Jesus came down here with a purpose. Oh, yeah. And Jesus operated in his purpose. And when we were in Sunday school this morning, that word just kept coming up over and over again. We just kept hearing different Sunday school members say purpose, purpose. And in this season, it's a time for us to remember to focus on our purpose because our purpose is tied to Jesus' purpose. He came here so that we all might have an opportunity to have everlasting life, but we have a job also. And our job is to make sure that we tell men, women, boys, and girls about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's our purpose. And we need to walk in it. And when we think about Christmas and the Christmas season, that should be a reminder of us that we need to keep on working, that there are more stories to tell, that there are more gifts to give, that there's more to share with others. Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, this morning we just want to say thank you so much, Lord. We want to thank you so much for another Sunday, Lord. We thank you so much for another Christmas season, Lord. We thank you so much for another opportunity, Lord. Another opportunity to get it right. Another opportunity, Lord, to live our lives as you would have us to live, Lord. Another opportunity, Lord, for us to light our candle and set it on the hill so that all may see your glory, Lord. Not ours, but your glory. Lord God, we are so grateful for you. We are so grateful for everything that you do for us day in and day out, day after day, month after month, year after year, Lord. Lord, and what we pray, Lord, is that you just continue to strengthen us and put it on our minds, Lord, to show this gratefulness, Lord. And we can show this gratefulness, Lord, by what we do for others. In this season, Lord, in this season of giving, in this season of loving, in this season of sharing, Lord, Lord, please put it on our hearts and minds, Lord, to continue to look out for those who are less fortunate than us, Lord. Lord, put it on our hearts and minds, Lord, to give 
even to those who can't give back unto us, Lord. Lord, put it on our minds, love, to love those, Lord, who don't receive it all the time. Lord God, this is what you call us to do. Lord, you want us to be Christ-like, to be like Christ. And if we look at the example of Christ, Lord, we see that he gave. We see that he went where others wouldn't go. We see that he associated with people that others wouldn't associate with. Lord God, we're just so grateful to serve a Lord and Savior like you. Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that each and every day that we can grow to be more and more like you. Lord God, and once again, we just want to say thank you. Lord, and finally, Lord, we just want to pray, Lord, that you just continue to order the steps of this ministry, Lord, that we might do what you would have us to do, Lord, that we might be able to make a greater difference, Lord, in, in the lives of others, that we might be able to draw more into your ministry, Lord. Lord God, we thank you so much for everything that you are, everything that you do, day in and day out. Lord, these are all blessings. We pray for in our son Jesus' name. Amen. This concludes our devotion for this morning.
y'all, but I think that deserves a reveling round of applause. My, 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 my. If you're going to do anything, you're going to go tell something. You want to gossip about something. Tell about the goodness of Jesus. First of all, start with yourself. Start with your family. And start with your community. If you do this, as Dr. Latica just said, your purpose is being served. Tell somebody about the goodness that this choir just got through testifying and singing about. And if you don't know anything about the precious Lamb of God, because without him, there would be no hope for you, me, and nobody else in this wretched world in which we live. I'm glad I don't have to wait till this season of a year rolls around to know who this here lamb is that was slain from the foundations of this world for your sins and mine. Yes. Not only did he, he, was he slain, but he emancipated us. Yes. Don't you know sin doesn't have dominion over you any longer? If you are in Christ, yes. you might say, well, how can it not? I sinned. This happens. That happens. Yes, it does. As we learned in Sunday school lesson this morning, all day long, you're going to be slaughtered. All day long, you're going to be invaded by thoughts and things that are vying against your affection, your allegiance, and your attention. But this lamb that they just got through singing about, this precious lamb, has taken care of all of that. That's what makes Christianity not easy, but feasible and attainable and achievable because of your faith and your hope and your strength in this lamb that they just got through singing about. We greet you that are listening and looking at us via satellite, internet, or however you're partaking of this service. Those of you that are here visiting with us, your name is not on our road. We thank God for you. Amen. We certainly thank God for your presence. We thank you for visiting with us because you could have been anywhere, but you chose to be here with us, and we thank Amen. God for you because we know something is going to be said Something's going to be done, not by us, but by the spirit that dwells within us. See, this awesome God that we've been singing about and we're talking about, and that we know about, he's here with us. You might say, well, I don't feel like he is. Or I'm going through this, that, and other. That may be so. But you never give up on him because guess what? He never gives up on us. We thank you because we know. And if you continue to listen, you continue to worship and fellowship with us, and pray much for us that we would do what God is calling us to do, then I know when this thing is all over with, our raptured souls will meet each other in glory. Yes. This is what this is all about. Yes. This is why we come to lift up this great God of ours. This is why we worship him in spirit and in truth. This is what it is all about. Yes. I just thank God for this fellowship here, this church, this family, this choir, Amen. just lifting up this precious God of ours, even in the midst of what we're going through. Amen. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be thankful and bless his name. Enter into his gates with what? And into his what? Lord. With praise. Thanks. That's your God-given right. That's your ability to do this. And at this time, I've been informed that our announcements, our Christmas revival will begin tomorrow night. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow Amen. night. December 5th, and it culminates on Wednesday night, December the 7th, 7 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. Now, our theme for this revival is spread joy and love. Now, doesn't that sound right? Yes, sir. Doesn't that feel right? Yes. Yeah. Isn't that what we are yeah. supposed to be about as being followers and Christians of Christ? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Spreading joy and love, not spreading this yeah. mishap and all this other stuff because it happens. And I I'm, I'm, I'm just want to let y'all in on a little secret. I'm going to let you know something. I don't mind telling it like it is. Because we, 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 as people of God, it's time for us to stand up and be counted among the righteous. It's time for us to stand up and be counted among God's people. That to belong to God's people is one of the greatest privileges there is yes, in this world. Yes, it is. Because God calls us great. Not, because, not that that means our head is supposed to swell, but we are great because of this God that's on the inside of us. And spreading love, joy, that's what it's all about. Amen. Our motto here is what? Love ye one another. Then we also see that our theme scripture is coming from John, the first chapter, verse 14, mm -hmm. and it is joy to the world. This world needs joy. This world has joy. Mm -hmm. 
then they just got through singing about, go tell it on the mountain. Go tell and spread this joy. Spread this joy. Spread it on your jobs, in your homes, wherever you go, in your communities, in this church, wherever you go. Now, I'm going to leave out here if the Lord's willing in a little bit and go into a birthday celebration for my mom, her 75th birthday. Now, we're going we to celebrate. We're going to spread joy. We're going to spread love. And we're going to do everything that we can do. But I said that to say this. This is what this is all about, and we're going to do this. And every member has been asked now to donate $25 towards the support of the revival. Amen. 50 Okay. Let me scratch this out. $50. That's what I thought we said last week. Amen. And you might say, well, I don't have, but I'm here to tell you, don't worry about what you don't have because God will give you what you need. I'm, I'm just telling you that. And we have to realize wherever we go, whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord and allow. And I, I hear Deacon Brown always say, if you take care of the Lord's business, Amen. take care of your business. Okay. He'll do it. Give him the opportunity and the chance to do it. Whatever you need, he's already secured it. He's already got it for you. But just do it in the way of the Lord. Amen. And then, let's see here. I think we... That's the last of our announcements. That he, and I just want to personally thank... I know my pastor, Sister McNeil, had something to do with this decoration. Because normally I would be doing it. But I thank God for them. And it's beautiful. It is, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. We just certainly thank God for it, and I think Deacon Latica is coming with, with our... Yes, we, we have one more announcement that's fresh off the presses. Uh, we're going to have a reason for the season giveaway here at, at the church. Uh, and this is basically uh, toys for up to 500 children, a toy giveaway for up to 500 children, uh, sponsored by our very own uh, brother James Ransberg. Uh, anybody who's been uh, to our Sunday school, knows him. He's been very, very active and vocal uh, with our Sunday school. Uh, so this is basically how it works. If your household is in need or if you know of anyone in need, uh, please pick up a sign-in sheet in the back foyer after church. So they're going to be out on the white table back there. Form looks like this. You just pick it up, uh, fill it out with the names, and uh, return to a uh, church by uh, Sunday, December day 18th. All right, so you get two, you got two Sundays to work with to identify, uh, you know, who, whomever. And uh, the giveaway will be uh, December 24th from 2 to 4 here at the church. So the parent Amen. will just have to come by and they can pick up the uh, toys for the ch child or for the children. Amen. So again, just remember after church, pick this up and anyone you know in need, please share it with them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I know I'm out of order here, but we, it's kind of a last minute. Uh, we will be sponsoring a field trip to the Audubon Zoo in New Orleans this coming Saturday. And when there are a lot of seats available, the buses have to go. So we, if the seats are available, we'd love to have someone that would, would, would be interested in going. This is mainly for the, our, our youth, but if you, as a adult, you want to participate, let us know. We'll be leaving first thing. Saturday morning, and we'll be coming back Saturday evening. So if you're interested in going, please let me know. Thank you. Amen. Amen. And also there's our, concerning our Christmas revival, that's going to be incorporated, I'm assuming, uh, with, with the revival that we do have. Uh, Monday, December the 5th, uh, the musical is going to be featuring our choir and choir guests. So we want you all to come out. Amen. And we want you just to enjoy and, and just be blessed of God. Amen. This is, this is what this is about. And then on Tuesday, of course, uh, we'll have uh, the male choir is slated, if I'm not mistaken, to have the Christmas cantata that we normally would have. So come out and support us for that as well. And on Wednesday night, our very own Reverend Carr is going to be here. He's going to be bringing us the word. Now, I don't know about you all, but Amen. I was at a revival a couple of months ago, and that was a grand revival. And, and the church is in need. When I say the church, I'm talking about the universal church is in need of revival. Amen. So pray much for the revival. Pray much for our Christmas revival and pray much that we would do what God is calling us to do because this is what this is all about. Amen. I know it's Christmas and we get caught up in all that, like Denise said, the la-las and this and that, and there's nothing wrong with that. But make sure your first priorities are in their place and you take 
that take precedence over everything else. And if you do this here, I'm sure Amen. you'll have a safe and a joyous <laughs> holiday. And this is what this is all about. So be mindful, and I think everybody should have have an announcement like this, and, and let's just follow it to the T and let, it, let us be, pray, be prayerful and let us bless everyone. This is what Christmas is all about. Amen. It's about the joy of the season. Amen. And experience it, and then when you experience it, share it with your family members. Share it with your grandchildren. Let them know what Christmas is really all about. It's not about tearing open a, a gift and Amen. getting this and getting that, Amen. but it's about what Christ came to do for us and what he did for us and what he continues to do for us today. That's what Christmas is all about. Amen. Don't get caught Amen. up in all right. the bill say, and all of the disarrays and this and that, but get caught up in the reason for the season. Know that Christ is the reason for the season. Amen. A lot Amen. of us don't know that. Amen. All right. Amen.
Wonderful, a supernatural, a very special gift. He came all the way down. Didn't have to, but he did it. He came all the way from heaven, left his throne, his mighty throne and glory. Came all the way down here to see about you, me. He don't get no better than this. It does not get any better than this. See, some of you, 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 you hadn't called him yet. But I double dare you, I dog double dare you to call him. If you have problems, which we all do. But I want to tell you something. Problems will exist. Issues will be there. But when they don't have you and you have them, you can be like Job. You can take them to the Lord, his Redeemer, and give them to him. Don't let them have you. You have them. And if you got them, give them to him. And I guarantee you that very special, that wonderful, that supernatural, that very special gift that only God himself can give. Woo! Hey, hey! Makes all the difference in this world. Makes all the difference in this world. Makes all the difference in this world. Yes, it does. Jesus. Jesus.
Amen, amen. It is now time and offering time. Uh, tithes and offering time. Uh, here at Black's Chapel, we have multiple ways to give. You can give online through our Giveify account. You can come by any day of the week and uh, drop it off in our drop box on the west end of the church, or you can give right here in service. Um, we have uh, flyers up here. If you haven't picked up one yet announcing our revival that you can share with other people, please do so as you march around. And at this time, we're going to turn everything over to our ushers. stand please let us pray Heavenly Father we come at this hour thanking you for this offering that was just taken we know those that have given gave with a cheerful heart as you love a cheerful heart and a cheerful giver and we thank you Father for this those that had not the funds to give this time, Father, give them the funds and give them a cheerful heart on the next go-round that they would be able to give. Father, at this hour and at this time, we know that you're going to multiply this offering for which it was taken. You're going to bless it, Father. And those, Father, that are going to re be recipients of it, Father, they're going to be continuously blessed. We thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. We certainly thank you for this season that you have brought us into. Father, that we would just continue to love you and we would continue to love our neighbors as we would ourselves. And Father, this we will do in the name of Jesus, doing your will, Father. At this hour and at this time, we pause to look at those that are on our sick and shut-in list. Father, we pray for those, Brother Bell, the Henderson family. We pray for everyone's name that is on our list and those that are abroad. We pray for those that are bereaving at this time as well, may have visited the grave site of a loved one. 
But, Father, we pray for their strength, their help, their hope, and their peace, as only you can give. Those that are incarcerated physically, spiritually, and mentally, in some capacity, we find ourselves. But we pray, Father, that your will will be done, your love, your mercy, and your grace will keep us and uphold us, Lord. We look to you. We thank you, Father, in the precious, the mighty, the powerful, and the matchless name of Jesus. Do we ask these and all blessings at this time. Amen and amen. All things. All things. Come on, me.
Hallelujah. time ago I could remember my grandmother and my grandfather in many of their conversations pertaining to certain subject matters at the end of certain state Are certain conditions in which they would have spoken in behalf of. They would use the phrase by and by. By and by. It took me a long time to come to understand just what they meant in saying that saying by and by. It meant that something better was going to come. Something better was going to happen was going to take place. Something other than this. It's more to it than just this. There is a hereafter. Which meant that whatever this may have been, that too shall pass. By And we are in the midst of one of those by and by moments when some of the best is yet to come. The moment in which we are in the midst of right now is a by and by moment. when we can really sense and identify with just how blessed and fortunate we are in the right now. In the right now. We are in a great place. We are in a great state of being. Simply because the presence of the Lord is with us. Can't you feel his presence? Can't you feel the presence of the Lord? Not just in you, but in this place. The spirit of the Lord has truly been ushered into this place. And I thank God for our choir and our musicians ushering in the spirit the way in which he has been ushered in. We cannot be God given. No matter how hard we may try. In order for this sanctuary to be filled with the spirit in which it is filled with, it took giving. And God has blessed us with so many various ways and means to go about accomplishing that work or that end, that, 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 that giving end. You didn't have to do it, but you did. All that you've done 
in order for your presence to be in this place this morning were gifts that you gave unto God because you didn't have to do it but you did. The choir did not have to give their time and their work and their energy, effort and their energy into preparing themselves to work the work that they worked, the musician. But they did. They did. You had other things that you could have been doing, needed to do, not needed to be doing at the Lord's time, but needed doing. And you chose not to do them, but to do God. To give God his due. All of us have something waiting on us. Somewhere to go. Something to do. Something that's undone right now. That you could have been doing now. But you chose. To work the work that you worked. It took all that all of you have given to usher in this moment in which we are in the presence of right now. You did not come here as a freeloader. You came here bearing gifts. May not have been monetary, but when you brought you, you brought the most precious gift that God has ever created. You. Nothing means more unto the Lord. For God so loved you until he gave unto you his last. And now you are giving back unto the Lord. It took everything that all of you have given to develop, to usher in the moment in which we are in the midst of. So give yourselves a round of applause. What a word. What a word. What a word. I thank our choir for blessing us the way that they've blessed us. And you know, moments like this moment that we're in right now, it has a way of revealing unto us just how blessed and how fortunate we truly are. You know, too often we get caught up in appraising God's worth or God's value or how much he's blessing us by the things that he allowed us to visually see and physically experience. But you really want to know where the blessings lie is when you give time and give thought to all the things, not that God did, but that God did not allow to happen. Amen. That he did not allow to come your way if you really want to know where you're blessed at, it's in the area of those places where the things taking place that you can't see. That you don't even have a clue of the knowledge that they even made it. That they could have, but they didn't. Could have, but they didn't. God held them away. Did not even allow you to experience, not so as to take you out of or bring you through it, but not even experience. A God who never slumber nor sleep. All while we slept last night, the enemy had a threefold mission to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. But look at you. You're still here. We have no clue and idea what God had to, what string he had to pull last night. What button he had to push. What command he had to give unto the enemy to enable us to be 
just to be, just to have. Word of God. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of St. Matthew. If we only knew. Lord say, my people perish because they don't know. If we only knew. A little bit more of that which is to be known. Matthew, the second chapter, the first through the twelfth verse. And there we will find these words. Now. These are some truths that are woven in the fabric of the word of God that our God wants us to know. Now. Now. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he? that is born, king of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of these shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down 
and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now, there are some truths that our God want his people to know now. Some truths which are woven into the fabric of our scripture reading. Now, some truths that he wants us to know. So let us think on this thought. Spiritual IQ. Spiritual. Even among us, there are so many incentives which are woven into the fabric of having a very high IQ. on the natural side. There are many hidden incentives, and blessings and rewards, and treasures that are woven into the fabric of just having a very high IQ. But we're talking about God wants us to know about all of the hidden incentives which are woven into the fabric of having a spiritual IQ, a high spiritual IQ. The more we know about our God, the more access we have the more access that's available unto us my people perish because of low spiritual IQ
the first day of December. Mark the beginning of the season in which we celebrate the birth of Jesus. The first day in the month of December. marks the beginning of the season in which we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Jesus' birthday. Jesus' birth day. A day of all days. Jesus' birthday is the day of all days. It was the day when heaven reached down. And touched earth. Jesus' birthday was the day that heaven. That God reached all the way down from heaven and touched earth. It was the day when the prophecy of the prophet Isaiah. Was fulfilled. When Isaiah stated that unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God the everlasting father, the prince of peace, and the increase of his government and his peace, there shall be no end. It was a day when God so loved the world until he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. It was that day when that little ray of light which is known as Jesus who constantly travels around the rim and ridges of our darkness and despair who always has within his capacity the ability to break into our situation and set us free. It was the day when the love of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, the long suffering of God, and the salvation of God manifest itself into flesh and dwell among us. And still today, wise men are willing to travel great distances in order to worship him. Still today, wise men are willing to travel great distances in order to praise him. Still today, wise men are willing to travel great distances just to bring and give unto him gifts. So the question which each of us should ask of ourselves is, what is my spiritual IQ? Wise men. Those are some of the works that wise men today are still willing to work. Travel great distance just to work.
worship him, just to praise him, just to bring unto him gifts. What's my spiritual IQ? Now there's not very much known about those three men. Because their names are not given. Their nationality is not given. It is not known whether they were Jew or Gentile. Their place of origin was not given. The only thing that the word of God shared with us pertaining to their place of residence was that they were from the east. And some even called them kings. Because of the gift that they brought and presented to the baby Jesus. The gift of gold. The gift of myrrh. And the gift of frankincense. Gifts that were worthy to be given to that of a king. Now the worth of those gifts that they brought practically identified them as being one or two people. Either they were men of great wealth or they were black. Because I say black because us black people, us black folk are the only people that I know personally that will spend their last dime going out buying certain gifts and other items to celebrate holidays and special occasions. And not only will we spend all of our own money, but we also spend other people's money. We'll spend the gas company's money, the water company's money, the light company's money. We'll spend MasterCard's money, Visa's money, and even Wells Fargo's money to go out and buy certain gifts to celebrate certain holidays and special occasions. And when it comes to celebrating the Lord's Day, I say again, when it comes to celebrating the Lord's Day and it's time to march around the gift table, so many of us reach into our front pocket and give God our spare change and leave the gift table with our heads hung high and our chest stuck out like we just done God a favor. Spare change. Loose change. Leftover money. <laughs> After you take care of your business. And whose business should come first? <laughs> if we reverence God. If we supported God. The way we reverence certain holidays and certain occasions. Hell would go out of it. <laughs> go out of business. Because there wouldn't be enough people there to keep the doors open. We don't know that much about those three men. But God reveals unto us enough. He wanted our focus on one little area. Upon one little spot. He didn't want us to have a, a, a broad focus when it comes to these three men. But a, a pinpoint focus. All God was interested in us knowing about those three men were that they were wise men. 
That's all God wanted to get out of this here. Wanted to drive that point home that these three men that's being spoken of in scripture were wise men. And there are three reasons why the word of God and why God defined those three men as being wise men. What's my spiritual IQ? What's your spiritual IQ? There are three reasons. God, the word of God shared all through the midst of errors. biblical experience that he allowed us to experience through scripture. First, they were wise men. God referred to them as being wise men because they had their priority in order. They were considered wise by God first because they had their priorities in order. When it came to giving unto God, they gave bountifully. Go, freaking sick, mock, stuff that was willing to be wise to be given to a king. When they gave to God, they gave bountifully. Why? Because those men knew that you can't be, we so often speak this phrase. Do we ever give heart to it? Do we ever give thought to what we're saying when we say it? Those three men knew that you can't be God given no matter how hard you try, which means that the more you give unto him, the more he has. Give back unto you. Not because of their lack of saying, but not. The more you give unto him, the more he gives back unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. And those three men knew that need, that poverty, that insufficiency are curable disease. That you can cure your illness. All because you can't be God given. No matter how. All of that is woven into that. You can't be God given. No matter how hard you try. You can give your way out of poverty. You can give your way out of need. You can give your way out of insufficiency. You can give your way out of depression. Why? Because Malachi tells us, bring all of your tithes and often to the storehouse so there be meat in the Lord's house and he will open up unto you a window in heaven and pour you out more blessings than you ever have room to receive. And he goes on to say, he will rebuke your devourer and he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. And the fruit of your ground is good health, sound mind, and prosperity.
They had their priorities in order. Oh, yeah. You can't be God given no matter how hard you try. That's why they took the time out and then sent it into this scripture reading. What they did. They didn't just say do it, but they wanted you to know what taught you to do it. They did not just give, but they gave things that were precious and precious and needful That's right. for their own. One of the reasons why God referred to these three men as being wise men. Because they had their priority, priorities in order. And secondly, God referred to these three men as being wise men because, because, because of the great distance in which they were willing to travel and because of the great difficulties they were willing to go through just to be able to worship, just to be able to reverence God. they were willing to travel and the many difficulties they were willing to go through just to have an opportunity just to have a chance to worship and praise God all the way from the east to Jerusalem that's why those two places were intended into this scripture the east and Jerusalem do you know that the, the distance between the east and Jerusalem, it took those men an entire year to get there by camelback? It took those men, it took those men 12 months to get there. It took those men 52 weeks to get there. It took those men 365 days of traveling on the back of a camel to get to the place where they could watch them and praise God. Those men, commitment, those men, dedication, those men, perseverance, those men, faithfulness, put us to shame today. Put us to shame. Because, see, now it's our turn. This is our season. And God has made these just more attractive unto us. That he has ever before. God has built a church home in every community, almost on every street. God has placed automobiles in every driveway. Our closets are full of clothes. Our pantries are full of full of food. Our cars are fully loaded, full of gas. Heater when it's cold. Air conditioning when it's hot. And how many of us Christians would not even get out of bed this morning, put on their clothes, climb in their automobile, and travel a couple blocks to worship and praise God? How many of us church folk? Yeah. Oh, my Jesus is the reason for the season. You can't be God. about this season. You don't know anything about how good God has been to you. How could you when you're responding back that kind of way? Now. These are truths that God wants us to know now. Before next Sunday gets here. What's your spiritual IQ? My people perish 
fading away, spiritually dying of malnutrition. God is not going to meet you anywhere. It's our turn to go to where he is. He already has come down from heaven. And we can't go too far, Lord. We can't get out of our bed on Sunday morning, put on our clothes, and, and, and climb off into our hundred thousand mile automobile. Full of gas, full of loaded. Heat when it's cold, air when it's hot. I know gas is expensive, but it's not that expensive. Where you should put 50 cents worth of gas. This is not about Christmas. It's not about Jesus. It's about you. Christmas is all about you. to travel? How much sacrifice are we willing to go through? How committed? How dedicated? How perseverance? How faithful? What's your spiritual IQ? These men were referred to by God as being wise men because of the great distance in which they were willing to travel and the many sacrifices that they were willing to make just to be able to worship and to reverence Because they knew they can't be God. It wasn't just a phrase. It was an honor. That they had accumulated along the way from past experience. Watch how you know. From all the past experiences that we've experienced with God. Did we grasp anything? Did we get, catch hold to anything that we're willing to hold on to? Same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. If it worked, if God worked yesterday, if it worked last year, He's still workable. Amen. The Lord done. What have you done for the Lord? That's the question that's hanging over our heads every day, 24-7. What are you willing to give back unto the Lord? You give to everybody else. Go out and spend our last. Burn gifts and for special occasions. And when it's time to celebrate the Lord's Day, we march around the Lord's gift table and give him leftover. What's left? When he demands your first fruit. We can allow this to roll on our back like one of the duck back as we want. Sound mind. And make it a prolonged life. And the third, those three men were referred to us by presenting to God, to us by God as being wise men. Because when God warned them of Herod's plan for them. When it was time to return back home, they went back another way. They did not go back the same way they came. They came by their Herod. But after God had enlightened and informed them upon Herod's plan, when they left the presence of Jesus, they went, the Bible said, they went back to their country another way. Right. 
They did not go back the same way in which they came. After those wise men had seen Jesus one time, experiencing that one time experience when it was time for them to return back home they went back another way they did not go back the same way in which they came before they met Jesus before they met Jesus they came from one way but after meeting Jesus they left going another way when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when we accept Jesus as our personal Savior, we should not leave the altar the same way in which we came. We should not leave the mercy seat the same way that we came. We should leave going another way and never make Paul's a, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. He should leave as a new creature, a new mind a new personality, a new behavior, a new attitude. He should turn away from envy, turn away from strife, turn away from malice, turn away from jealousy, turn away from hatred, and go God's way. That's what he meant when he told Isaiah. But that, 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 that if my people, which are called by my name, would armor themselves before me, pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal the land. You shouldn't go back away from the Lord the same way you came. not words to just read but it it represents truth it contains and consists of truth that God wants us to know now because my people are perishing because they just don't know we have the old saying want us to know it now. Yes, he does. now. Yeah. Study, show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed to rightfully claim that yes, which belongs to him. Yes, it's ours to claim yes, the fullness of heaven and earth because both belong to God. Yes, and both of them are in place for us, his children, to inherit the treasures of earth and the treasures of heaven. Don't sell yourself short. Don't accept less than what your father has laid aside for you. Everything that God will me and earth, I want it. And I'm willing to do whatever God will have me to do. Whatever. It is the Lord will have for me to do to get it, I'm willing to do it. And all he asks of us to do, as he asked Moses and the children of Israel when they stood upon the banks of the Red Sea, speak to my people. And tell them to just stand still 
and watch the salvation of the Lord. And once they have seen the salvation of the Lord, move forward. To know who I should allow to pilot my plane and to guide my ship to the place and to the destination in which God has assigned for me to land, to come ashore. At. What's your spiritual IQ? The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience or candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience or candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. Our God has made himself more accessible unto our season than he has to any season which came before. Because our God knows time is winding down. Time is running out. And for someone it runs out every tick of the clock. We're talking about judgment day. Judgment day for the individual is sealed when that last beat, that last breath releases itself from your body. Your judgment day is marked. Wherever death finds you at, that's where you're going to be judged from. Whatever state of being you're in. If you're saved, then you're saved. If you're unsaved, you're unsaved. Many will come running, crying out, saying, Lord, Lord, and I'm going to say, go away. I know you not. But today is the day of salvation. Amen. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. I say unto our viewing audience, if there's something that's been said or something that's been done throughout the activity of this worship service, not just by the spoken word, God has provided us with so many various ways and means to come to know him in the pardon of our sins. It may have been through a musical note. It may have been through a, a song the choir sang. It may have been through a prayer one of the officers prayed. It may have been through a scripture that someone read. I may have been from the expression on your navel that's sitting to your right or your left or the hammer in front of you. May I have it on their face. God knows us. From the crown of our heads until the sole of our head, God knows us. Oh, yeah. He knows every strain of hair we have upon our heads. Yes, he does. And he knows exactly what it takes to capture your attention. To get you to turn around and go back home another way. Yeah from the way in which you came. I don't know how God has worked on you through. I don't know what way God chose to minister to you through. But I know he has a way. And I know that his word will not go out and return back unto him void. But that it is going to accomplish that which pleases him. And what pleases our God most is that us as people be of good health, sound mind, and prosperous. Yes, sir. Something oh, has right. been said or something has been done throughout the activities of our worship service that has brought you into full circle with God regardless of where your presence may have been when you came into that circle. You're there now. Amen. And God awaits a yay. If you're out there and you desire to become a part of this ministry, all you have to do is just key into our comment section, our inbox, your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual memo. And I will personally contact you. And we will go from there. Amen. To our in-house, the door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. If you're here, will you come? 
will you call? Will you call? What an awesome, mighty God we serve. And he wants us to know him and about him now. Because he is a right now God. God has made himself available unto you. Regardless of where you are right now. Take advantage of the opportunity. Take advantage of the season in which God has placed us in. A season where he is more accessible unto his people than ever before. This is our season. Amen. Take advantage of the fruit that Jesus told his disciples are rotten in, in the field. Pray that the Lord will send forth laborers to go forth and gather in the harvest because it is rotten in them. Our children, our sons, our daughters, our husbands, our wives, our mothers, our fathers, our sisters, our brothers, our co workers, our neighbors are rotten in it. the field. And God wants us to go out, Mother Wyndham, and gather them in. Because they are ripe for harvest. And he said, my word will not go out and return back. He said, we have not because we ask not. And sometimes when we ask, we ask a myth. We don't ask with that conviction. We don't ask with that faith. We don't ask with that commitment. We don't ask with that blessed assurance that the will of God is with me and I'm working the work that he willed me to work in doing what I'm doing. God is with me and where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. We thank God once again for all that he has allowed to be said and done throughout the activity of our worship service. We're getting ready now for our commune. But let us not forget, starting tomorrow at 7 o'clock, the first night of our trio revival night services. Please, ma'am, please, sir. As Paul told the church down in Rome, I beseech ye therefore by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. For this is your reasonable service. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And it is the will of God for his people together and assemble themselves at plays in the time in which they have been requested. Tomorrow at 7 o'clock, our first night of revival services, and we're going to have a blessed, hallelujah, glorious time. Our mass choir going to render the song service along with all the guests that we invited to come out and share with us who they're going to be. We have no clue of an idea. But I have one knowledge, one, one knowledge, that is the Lord is going to be here. And that should be El Shaddai more than enough. So please, ma'am, please, sir, grab your neighbors, your co-workers, your family members, get on the telephone. Whatever means of transportation or whatever means of communication God has blessed you with, take advantage of it. And invite others to come out and share with us on our first night of revival service. God bless you. Brother Pastor, we still have some announcements, some uh, flyers. If you need one for your co-workers, your friends, your neighbors, we're going to have them up here. And after service, you can get one. While they are preparing for the communion, good afternoon, everyone. In making ready for our revival, we will have different auxiliaries serving each night on the devotion committee. On Monday night, we're asking the mothers, the deaconesses, and the caring hearts. On Tuesday night, the women ministers. On Wednesday night, the music department, the youth, and ushers. 
The deacons, of course, will assist each night. And we're asking the leaders of those auxiliaries, if you will, be sure that we have someone up here to serve. At least two people or one person from your auxiliary. Amen. Mothers, women ministers, we will see you all starting tomorrow night. Thank you.
Let us give thanks. Once again, our most gracious and eternal Father, we come before your presence with bowed heads and humbled hearts. We come thanking you for urging us once again into this season. The season when God climaxed his love toward humanity. For God so loved this world until he gave his only begotten son. And his son repeated the work by giving his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And his son asks of this, of us, that as often as we would to do this in remembrance of him. And how can we forget the source of our strength, the hope of our faith, our way out of no way, our bridge over troubled water, our lily in the valley, our will in the midst of a will, the fire which is shed up in our bones, how can we forget? Father, we pray your blessings upon the content of this table, not knowing all the hands that may have fallen upon it along its way, but in knowing you, if you would just breathe upon it, it would become sanctified, cleansed, purified, Whereas that as we partake of it, we'll be able to present ourselves also back unto you without blemish. And that is our will, Lord God, that we take a seat at the table and dine with you through this holy communion. Thank you for the participants. Thank you for this season. And all we can say to that in which already been done is amen. Amen. Amen.
as we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper, let us please remove the first layer of covering as we expose our cracker. This is the bread that represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was bruised for the remission of all of our sins. Let us eat. The second layer of covering to reveal our wine. This is the wine that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for remission of all of our sins. Let us drink. After Jesus' disciples had eaten of the Lord's Supper, they rose, sung a hymn, and marched out to the Mount of Olives. Let us please stand for the singing of our hymn, which will be followed by fellowship. Our hymn. <laughs> 